Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video here on my channel. So in today's video guys we are going to be discussing about my personal wish list for Need for Speed 2017 or whatever uh, the actual title is going to be. Uh, but however with the official announcement and um, unveil of a brand new Need for Speed game uh, is definitely coming very soon. Uh, we want to reveal the top 10 features I'm hoping to see from the next open world racer by Ghost Games. Now, Need for Speed 2017, as it's obviously called at the moment until we actually have an official name for it, uh, will likely be unveiled in May, uh, detailed at an EA Play event in June, and even further at Gamescom in August, eventually hopefully releasing roundabouts uh, November time which means only a few months away until we actually find out everything that we need to know about the new game. Uh, it's also really exciting that the fact that it is Need for Speed 17, uh, 2017, which actually will launch around Project Scorpios for Xbox's um, release timeframe, which of course is coming out this year as well. Uh, obviously that's good for a lot of reasons because Ghost will be thinking of ways to take advantage of the new hardware, uh, very advanced hardware, uh, and how they could push their features, visuals and performance beyond what's possible on the current Xbox One. So we're going to get straight into it. I'm going to be doing 1 to 5 in today's video and then tomorrow we'll be coming up with 5 to 10. And obviously guys, I'd like to see your suggestions down there in the comments below. Now then, the first thing I'd like to see is an improved career. So the career of any game is one of its most important aspects. It sets the atmosphere and tone of the overall experience whilst introducing players to various gameplay mechanics and uh, progression systems which are found in-game. Now, uh, in the case of Need for Speed 2017, I'd like to see a more expansive career experience. Now, the Need for Speed reboot from 2015 did a very nice job of this uh, with uh, all of the interesting characters, um, obviously who didn't really become very interesting after a while, uh, but obviously as well as the cheesy cutscenes, eh, it allowed for the narrative that flowed quite well, and that's not something that you normally see in racing games anymore. Uh, the I Icons concept, uh, who were named as the heroes of today's car culture in Need for Speed, also worked, worked quite well uh, within the career. Now hopefully this is an area Ghost Games continues to push forward in, introducing more characters for us to discover, uh, the cinematics that feel less cheesy and more engaging, but do continue to push the fun factor and street racing style of Need for Speed, as well as a gritty dark tone for some of the elements of the career. Now I don't want Need for Speed 17 to always take place at night time, but when it does, make it feel dark and gritty not only by the lighting but through its atmosphere and the, and the feeling you get when playing it. In terms of gameplay and missions, I really did enjoy how Need for Speed mixed up the experience uh, with race and drift events, adding drag racing, organised and law breaking street racing and Forza Horizon 3 style PR stunts like speed cameras, drifts, uh, drift zones and data signs with massive ramps to jump on would create even more intensity when driving. Now breaking the speed limit uh, when you drive through a speed zone uh, uh, should gather the attention of the cops maybe and they chase you until they pull you over to pay a fine or you escape. Little ideas like this would make a great, um, would make a very much more creative, challenging, and overall engaging experience. Uh, so as well as this, Need for Speed 2017 should introduce us to more icons, more tuners, and even grittier themes, uh, such as high style missions when you must locate and steal cars, or take down rival racers and destroy everything that they throw at you. In Need for Speed 2017, I want to feel like a criminal and a street racer who's constantly breaking the law, with a dark and gritty atmosphere constantly at the forefront, but of course that would have to be for the night time, but for during the day, I would expect less criminal intensive missions and more racing and drift activity and even some official organised events uh, that would make the nice night sequences that bit more satisfying and enticing. Uh, so we're going to go for the second one now, which I should believe should have dynamic time and weather. Now, Need for Speed 2015 lacked a true day and night cycle. It only lasted from dusk to dawn, so most of the experience felt completely dark. While this ensured Need for Speed's atmosphere aligned with the story, it was frustrating that I couldn't see my customised rides in bright daylight and take stunning photos of them to share online with the sunbeams. As well as a true day and night cycle with the dynamic time and weather, the world of Need for Speed 2017 should also adjust based on the conditions and time of day. For example, cops would be hidden around alleyways and street corners during the night, while daytime has far more traffic, which should be uh, based on the area that you are in. Of course, uh, this should also tie in with events, certain ones being associated with daytime only, and others being exclusively to nighttime. 
Uh, it's important that Ghost allows users to speed up the time if they want to progress further in the career though, because that's something that's always frustrating me in older GTA titles, where certain missions were restricted to certain times, which obviously is a bit annoying if you ask me if you want to do something afterwards. And finally, the introduction of dynamic time and weather could also lead on to more conditions, such as overcast, light rain, heavy rain, thunder, lightning, potentially snow, hail, and hopefully some extravagant sunrises and sunsets for players to feast their eyes on in the photo mode. Now the third one, guys, would be obviously, it's a Need for Speed game, cars and customization. Um, Need for Speed can't be a racing game without cars, it's a bit obvious really, isn't it? But this time we're hoping for a lot of vehicles, at least over 100 to 120 would be ideal, in my opinion, as the lineup for Need for Speed 2015 wasn't the most appealing, nor was it very large, with around 50 cars in total. As well as this, fully rendered cockpits and interiors will also be a nice addition. This might be a big step up for Ghost in terms of modelling that would be required, but it would be highly welcomed and a result in much larger car roster overall. Obviously they could do this with the new firepower that the uh, Project Scorpio is bringing to the Xbox franchise. So some of the cars we would love to see in Need for Speed 2017 range from extremely customizable, uh, like the Mitsubishi Evo 10 and the 350Z, to the latest supercars like the Audi R8 and the Acura NSX. Overall, we do need more vehicles across a variety of car types to fill in the gaps. Uh, more JDM style cars, more muscle cars, supercars, hatchbacks. We need classic muscle cars like the Camaro and the Dodge Charger and Challenger to hatchbacks like the Golf R32. Now more of these cars would be welcome, but also we need Audi in the game and Lexus with the LFA and the RCF. Uh, in more rides from uh, Subaru and Mercedes, introduced Jaguar, uh, new supercars like the 2017 Ford GT, the holy trinity of hypercars, the 918, the LaFerrari and the P1, the Centenario, Lamborghini and so on. There's a lot of people out there who don't want supercars or hypercars in either speed. Obviously it's understandable, but why not? More is better, and the lack of having decent collection of them uh, in Need for Speed 2020 Need for Speed 2015, I can't even speak today, was gutting, especially since Need for Speed Rivals had loads of supercars in them. In addition, there's also the Mazda RX-8, some SUVs, the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG and Eclipse, as well as the Nissan 350Z and 370Z uh, that both offer lots of body mods. I think you get the point. We could keep naming cars forever, but, you know, that's the way it is, really. More vehicles aren't needed, but so is customization. We need more parts for every car, including a range of new body parts for the full lineup of rides from Need for Speed 15. There needs to be lots of it, with a mixture of both official and Ghost Games or Need for Speed branded body parts. Nearly every car should have them, with tons of options for other players, and one or two wide body kits such as Rocket Bunny, Liberty Walk, um, Need for Speed and other brands. There should also be a range of horns and neons, with option for the colour of the lights and how much they emit. In terms of tuning, adding more wheel spacing options bring them out, bring the, brings them out further, and the tyre width upgrades as well as the gear ratios and option for the weak or stronger nitrous systems. The game could also showcase where the tuning and upgrades are happening, just like when applying body parts, applying more a cinematic feel to the overall experience, and something very Forza Vista-esque. Need for Speed 2017 should also add exclusive cars and kits that can only be earned by reaching certain parts of the career and beating particular drivers. These, all co these could also be specifically wrapped cars with an exclusive livery and would make for enticing rewards to keep players gripped and excited to progress. They could also be related to pink slip events from Most Wanted, so in addition there could also be a Ford Crown Victoria with optional police scanner, siren and horde upgrades, offering the potential of undercover cop missions. This could then further expand the idea of Need for Speed 2017 being a grittier experience in terms of its atmosphere and narrative. Now finally we have the issue of garage space. How many vehicles should you be allowed to own in 17? Whilst I would usually jump the gun a little and say that shouldn't be any really cap, there is obviously a cap that should be placed, but not as less as the one in Need for Speed 2015. Now I feel like there's a more creative way Ghost could implement an unlimited garage system into the game. For example, how about the option for upgradable garages? Ah, that's a good idea, isn't it? Where you can further expand them to store more and more cars. I like the garage navigation system of uh, Need for Speed uh, 2015 because it was unique and it would be a shame to lose that in favour of boring menus. Uh, However, the option to buy more garages and warehouse and even have club garages shared with your friends would make the car limit feel non-existent, even if there was to be one. There could also be different tuners to find as well, including those specialising in performance, body parts, wraps, um, as well as different car styles.
So the fourth one, guys, is Need for Speed Online. Now, the last few Need for Speed titles have always been online, meaning you couldn't play them without a connection to the internet. While this allows for a more living, breathing, open world with actual real-life players, it would be nice to see Need for Speed 2015, uh, 2017 introduce a solo mode, or offline mode, that can be accessed if you want to play by yourself, or your internet connection drops. The mode could also kick in if you lose your connection whilst playing online, resulting in no lost progress. Whilst playing by yourself, it would also be nice if there was a proper pause button. How many of you have tried pausing during a race, only to find out that it didn't actually stop? Yeah, I've done that quite a lot. So whilst a better offline experience is a must, there is a lot needed to be done with the online experience as well. Playing Need for Speed 2015 with friends was an absolute nightmare as it rarely ever worked, and when it did, there would often be issues with loading into a session, um, or someone would end up being kicked out. That's not to say it's always happened, but it, it's definitely happened a lot in my opinion. We need proper tunable lobbies with an easy invite system, so you can easily play online with friends via invite-only sessions. There also needs to be options for traffic, day, night, weather conditions, cops, group waypoints, competitive events, and other settings to tweak the experience to your liking. There also needs to be more to do online, including fun game modes, racing, drag and drift events, car meets, and even a co-op campaign experience where you can experience the narrative side by side with your friends, as it would also be awesome to enter your garage with your friend and customise your rides together all under one roof. Need for Speed should introduce more social features like the crew, where hundreds of thousands of players could band together to form a club. Similar to Forza Horizon 3, the feature could allow for dedicated crew leaderboards, competition against competing crews, and even sharing garages, where players could contribute vehicles for everyone in the crew to drive. Now, as well as uh, tune and rap sharing, crews should be the ultimate social and competitive aspect of the new Need for Speed game. So the final thing for today's video, guys, uh, I appreciate it's been a little bit of a long video, however, there's a lot of information to cram in. So this last one, guys, is customised races. Now, there's been a lot of events in Need for Speed, but sometimes I feel like I want them to make my own, uh, So such as placing your own checkpoint, adding cops to the side of the road, placing barriers to make for even more intense racing, so things like that. Now, to have a track builder style feature where I could make and share races online, just like GTA, would also be a great addition to Need for Speed. From street racing to drift and drag events, this would open a more variety um, in the roster of circuits available to race on. Just expanding on this, you should also be allowed to place custom stunts like ramps, speed cameras and even create off-road drift courses. Something that Need for Speed didn't have was off-roading, so more of the map would potentially allow for some unique creations. Forza Horizon 3, however, introduced a new feature called Horizon Blueprint, you're all aware of this, where users could create race events with custom number of laps, set the time and weather conditions, and the type of cars that could be used within the event. This could be shared online, but you couldn't place your own checkpoints. If Need for Speed implemented this feature and went one step further to add the custom checkpoints and the real customizable events, it would be a very, very big step up. So those are the five things I've got for you today, guys. Uh, I'll have part two coming probably tomorrow or the day after, so stay tuned for that. Again, guys, I would like to see your thoughts down there in the comments below of what you think will actually be implemented into this new game. But anyway, guys, that is basically it for me in today's video. I did hope you enjoy it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you over in my next video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.